What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? My name is Yvonne Constancio and I am based in Nashville, Tennessee. I am a licensed acupuncturist, Reiki master, energy work healer, um, certified yoga instructor, uh, Akashic Records channel, and I also channel the Ninth Dimension Arcturian Council, as well as do photography on the side for fun and my creative outlet. <laughs> and um, currently I'm also in the midst of creating a meditation retreat center in New Mexico, which is called the Frequency Center. Well, just thank you for coming on, <laughs> on honestly. And thank you just for giving us a bit of an introduction on yourself there as well. Uh, I said this off air, there's just so much uh, with the work that you do, because I mean, you could, you know, you could talk about acupuncture just in one show, you know, Akashic readings, <laughs> the channeling, right? And we're going to try to get through your story and, and, and so much more uh, and do a bit of channeling as well. right? <laughs> but um, let's just start from actually, let, let's just go back a bit here as well. Let's go back bit here now um what i found interesting about yourself as well is that and i don't know if you've mentioned this too much but there is a, a native american um thread in your in your past as well which i thought was fascinating yeah where where did you see that oh, well, i told <laughs> you i was going to do my, i told it. you i was going to do my research <laughs> <laughs> um well the only thing I know about my Native American past is I did a DNA test 
you know, about three years ago and found out that I have about 54% indigenous uh, blood in me from uh, the, I'm so horrible at being able to say my, my, um, what, what, I don't know, my, what do you call it? The origin, the indigenous origin, um, but they are um, the Kualhiltekan mm -hmm. uh, people from southern, well, northern Mexico, which is now southern Texas. So um, interesting enough, I went to school in San Marcos, Texas. That's where I went to college. And I have had a deep, deep connection to the San Marcos River. It just feels like my friend and I love it so much. And I, I, when I go home, I make sure to go to the river, spend time with it. If it's winter, I sit next to it. If it's summer, I get in it. I touch it no matter what. Um, very strong relationship with that river. So when I found out about my ethnicity or my background or, um, or my DNA, I found out that my people lived on that river. And so that connection all of a sudden made a whole lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, well, they were all, all over America, weren't they? Um, in, you know, in places that some people would never have guessed as well, the, the tribes, um, you know, big tribes. And, you know, the, and the practices and the, the culture and it's just, I mean, I find it really fascinating history and everything, right? But what I found with that angle was this, this ability that that's, you know, you've blossomed is not really there with anyone else that you know in the family. And I just found it fascinating that that, did it come from that angle maybe? Honestly, I, on my dad, I don't know my mother's side very well. She has... She's the oldest of 11 children. <laughs> so there were a lot of family over there that um, I just didn't get to know very well. Uh, but my dad's side, I would I would say that my grandma was very spiritual, but, but also quite religious. But I do think that my father and my grandmother both have a spiritual quality to their, their way of being and their living and their existing on, on this earth. Um, and... I wouldn't be surprised if there were or were mystical experiences that they had that they just didn't share with right. anyone. Yeah, I think you would you would say that you was always um, sort of shy when you was growing up, and maybe that was due to your sort of sensitivity in a sense that you were sensing energy. You just didn't understand that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. My whole life, I um, and I'm sure a lot of people who. Uh, who get into this are or or consider themselves a star seed or um light worker or whatever you know whatever you want to call it um didn't quite be feel like they fit in right and so most of my life i felt very much like an observer of people and not understanding um them very well and not understanding myself um, and there was always this sense of feeling homesick and not really knowing what that meant. And growing up in a religious family, just, put, you know, making that mean that, oh, I must miss God or I must miss just, you know, uh, which is probably partially true. I miss being with God. But when, when the Arcturians contacted me, um, it suddenly, I suddenly had this sense of feeling really grounded, mm -hmm. which is funny because most of my life I felt so floaty and so sort of not of this world. <laughs> so when, when these interdimensional beings that are not of this world, you would think would maybe make me feel even more <laughs> not of this world, but it actually grounded me. It actually finally made me feel like, oh, okay. Now I know who I am. Now I'm home. Yeah. What would you say to your younger self if you could say something? Gosh. I would probably just give her the permission to be herself and not hide herself. Give her the permission to speak up about the things that she was observing or seeing or sensing. Um, and not be so afraid of um, being different or <laughs> uh, 
uh, you know, trying to be someone that everyone else expected her to be, I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and being your authentic self, it's if you're going to help others, uh, you've also got to be able to help yourself. You've got to be able to work on yourself and be true to yourself. And I think a lot of us, you know, we're uh, some of us aren't living in truth, are we? In, in a lot of ways. And this, this causes all sorts of imbalances. A lot of imbalance, yeah. Um, it's the impact of not being authentic is so far reaching. And I don't think people understand that completely that when um, you're hiding yourself or you're diminishing yourself or you're yeah. dismissing yeah. yourself um, or you're ignoring your your own needs or your own desires, that the impact of that is not just on the individual, it's on the entire planet. <laughs> it's like, right. it really ripples. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. You're... you're um, your uniqueness and what you're here for is so important to be expressed. It's so important to be, um, I don't know, the honesty of, of where you are, no matter where you are, mm -hmm. I think is important to, to share um, because we're all helping one another. Um, that's right that's a great transform. message <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, we, of course we are and we, if we transform ourselves we transform as you say it, it ripples and I've always said this in previous interviews it ripples to other people in more ways than you can imagine mm -hmm. so many more ways um, yeah and sometimes the things we're here to do uh, yeah it's scary you know yeah you know it's completely out of your comfort zone or it, whatever it's bringing up in you but um, maybe you've not dealt with this in past lives and this is the time the time is now right yeah, yeah. so thank you for just sharing that I really appreciate that and I know people will that watch this as well it's, it's such an you know an, an important um, part of your journey as well I think so let's keep going backwards right because I just love to do that right um but let's go back to your waiting tables um you you're not actually probably well you in, in the greatest of health right in some respects well you know you you um, there's depression a, a little bit as well and there's a student clinic that that's dealing in uh some more you know holistic healing that was a, a a class colleague of yours that uh, was was doing this, and this was a transition time for you, not only to experience the healing, but then to go into a new direction because you were studying something completely different at the time. Yeah, I was. I was. I so I graduated as a as an undergrad with an anthropology degree, with a focus on prime prime primatology. So when I graduated, I went out for about ten years, getting various uh, jobs in the field. Uh, studying primates. Yeah. You know, I went to Costa Rica and spent time there following spider monkeys. I took care of over, um, gosh, 800 Japanese snow macaques in this animal protection institute down in Dilly, Texas. Um, I worked with chimpanzees that knew sign language at the Central Washington University. Um, and that was all wonderful. It was wonderful 10 years. I loved it. But living in a forest following monkeys doesn't really give, doesn't really make money. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, and I was 34 at the time. And I thought, you know what, I have no financial security. This has been great. But there is like, I would, as you said, I was waiting tables. So I would save up a bunch of money, waiting tables, land a job in the field, go do that till I ran out of money, come back, save up more money, go do something else, come back. This was the cycle. So I had no money. Um, and so I decided, well, what else What else do I like? What else am I interested in? And um, I prayed a lot. And I uh, looked around my house also and realized that most of my books were about holistic health and healing. And so I was like, hmm, I think I might like that. Maybe I should go. Um, well, actually, what happened first was, you're right, I... I have a history of Crohn's disease. So while when I was waiting tables, uh, my friend was in acupuncture school at the time. So he said, why don't you come to the student clinic? I think I can help. This will probably make you feel a lot better. 
it's more affordable because it's the student clinic and, you know, we're being supervised. And I was like, okay, I'll go try it out. And it did help. Uh, the Chinese herbs and the acupuncture helped with the um, Crohn's and the depression. So this, I think, deciding to uh, switch to acupuncture and go to graduate school for that, I think was about three to four years later. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. then that must have been, was that a master's or was that a, just a normal bachelor degree or? It's a master's, master's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in uh, yeah, acupuncture and oriental medicine. You're in Texas and tell me if I'm wrong here. And then a, a, an opportunity arises uh, with a partner, I believe, that you were going to move to um, Nashville. And obviously things didn't, something didn't work out, right, with, with that relationship. And you still decided to actually push forward, even though you didn't know many people in, in Nashville, you, you decided to push forward and, and go with what felt right and, and head to Nashville. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I knew uh, two people here uh, and um, they were very busy. They uh, were, they're in the film industry. So, and, and TV film industry. So I, you know, the long hours in that. So they weren't really available to, to hang out with, but I had secured a job here at a, at a local um, acupuncture community clinic. And so I worked there until uh, I met my partner, Ramona. And then we opened the Nashville Center for Alternative Therapy together. Now you, you're doing some fantastic stuff. Now, just very quickly, just tell us your website is? Uh, YvonneConstancio.com is my personal website. We also have the Nashville Center for Alternative Therapy website, which is MyNashvilleCenter.com. So at the Nashville Center, now this is where people can come in person, in person as well to come see you. You've got another center that uh, you and Ramon are both uh, looking at turning up in New Mexico. Um, but just sticking with the Nashville Center. So... Um, there's a number of services on your website, which we're just about to get into as well, because it will lead into everything we're going to discuss. Um, for a number of years, I want to say for about 12 to 13 years, maybe, that yeah, at this center, which is a, is it a non-for-profit, non-profit? It is a non-profit. A non-profit. Yes. The both... Frequency Center is, yeah. not, not Nashville Center. Okay, yeah. That, that's yeah. for-profit, yeah. Right, <laughs> yep. Okay. You've been doing um, Reiki, uh, acupuncture relief, and um, yoga as well. You're a yoga instructor. Um, so very briefly, for, so, so if people are in the Nashville area, they can come to you and they can um, have uh, healing with uh, Reiki, uh, acupuncture. For those who, and now you don't do the Reiki, you don't do that long distance, do you? That's, that's in person. I do. I have done it long distance. I've done it on Zoom. Especially during the pandemic, <laughs> uh, right? Okay. Did that so, a bit so that's, more. that's something you can offer. Yes. Okay. So, very briefly, those for those who may not um, be too sure what Reiki is, what is Reiki in a sense, and um, uh, what are the benefits of it? Um, Reiki is uh, just a a form of energy work. Um, honestly. I, the benefits of it are, are uh, lots of things, health benefits, balancing your energy centers, um, calming, soothing, um, you know, with the energy centers balanced, obviously anything is possible from there. You, you, I often told my clients, you know, now that you're going to be, now that you've had this session, just pay attention to what comes up for you now and pay attention to how you are going to be more clear, a clearer vessel or more aligned vessel for taking action on something or for dealing with something or for seeing a new perspective around something, for healing something. Um, I think it, it that alignment you get after a session is is a very important little time frame of paying attention for for um, the opportunity for healing because you're you're really sort of aligned and clear after a session. Right. Is there any sort of common tools that, that are used in, in a session? I, um, I, I do use a pendulum to read the energy centers. Um, 
fair not very often i use crystals but they're there if if i'm called to use them um it's usually just my hands <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's about right. all i use and and you're not really touching them in a sense you may touch to connect to them initially maybe but it's all sort of hands off in a sense isn't it yeah yeah so i guess then um it, it will show up any um energy imbalances or anything that's maybe out of balance as well uh there's healing from it um you know and p people talk about well i get, people talk about this but um obviously you're connecting with what you maybe you we you would call the chakras and you're balancing yes. the chakras and very very briefly just what are the chakras for those listening that may not know they're energy centers um there that the most common ones that we speak of are the seven that are the root the sacral the solar plexus the heart the throat the third eye the crown um and these all have different um energies that sort of i guess command different uh physical energies in the body that come that sort of direct actual organs actual glands and energetic systems of the body so when there's an imbalance you know you may see it present in a variety of ways um so yeah and i guess it was your sort of beginning well, not beginning. You've been, you know, it's it's something that you've been building up for a long time. But it, it it is your it's the essence into the opening for you for working with the Arcturians, which we're going to get into very shortly as well. Um, now with acupuncture, that's an, that's a very interesting one as well. Now, um, obviously, the, your pain relief is one thing that it that it offers, but um, people do say that acupuncture can help to lead to a, a more happy and sort of complete life in a sense. So it's a Chinese med medicine, isn't it? Back from the Chinese. Yes. And um, this is something that you, that you, you, uh, did you do? A, I mean, you, I think you studied this, didn't you, for so long. I mean, this is not something you just walked into. No, this is a tip, typically a four year, uh, degree to 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 become a licensed right. acupuncturist. What's some of the uses then? What's some of the common uses when clients come to see you? In a sense, a lot of uh, physical pain, um, low back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, knee pain. Uh, you know this type of pain, <laughs> and also emotional um, stuff like anxiety, depression. I have a lot of digestive disorders we work on fertility um yeah that's that's mainly what i see yeah and how long does a session sort of last for then i do 30 minute sessions and 60 minute sessions right and again this yeah. is obviously in person only in uh, person yeah yes. yeah with, with with acupuncture but i've always been fascinated with it i've not spoke to many people that actually do it but i know that even, you know people have talked about even curing you know insomnia headaches um yes. i think they do they use it in martial arts sometimes acupuncture yes. yeah they do don't they yeah yeah well, obviously yeah. it's chinese really you know yeah, <laughs> a thread there isn't there yeah um fascinating fascinating and Okay, so uh, we so you've been doing the acupuncture now for about uh, twelve to thirteen years. Is that right? Right. Yep. Yep. Yes. And and has the acupuncture and the reiki sort of evolved over this year, over those years, for you in a sense? Well, yes. Um, the acupuncture has been interesting. That was sort of my introduction into experiencing energy. Um, where now you know I can just slide my my finger over your body and be able to tell exactly what what where the point is or i there's just an energy of that changes on the body even the skin feels different um but yeah when you're palpating and touching bodies every day i think that just lends itself to you being open to now uh discovering the the energetics of a body and so i uh, i was certified in Reiki. And then that has even really evolved. I wouldn't even call what I do Reiki um, uh, anymore. Yeah, uh, it's really kind of evolved into I don't even know what it is. Honestly, it's energy work that um, where I, I uh, can tap into 
your spirit team pretty much is doing the work um, or past loved ones, galactic guides, spirit guides, angels. I mean, people, all kinds of things come in to do the work. And um, it's been really fun because I'm, I consider myself really good at surrendering <laughs> to whatever happens and um, with protection. I don't want, you know, uh, dark stuff coming in, but with protection, I'm open to surrendering for the greatest good of my client. And that's what I think has helped this energy work evolve into something just well, different and new every day. Yeah, you've yeah. evolved, haven't you? That's that's the thing. Yeah. Um, uh, as you've gone down this journey. So, okay, uh, let's just move this very quickly to the Akashic Records, because I, I said at the beginning that there's so much to this, what you do. So, um, yes, the Akashic Records. So, very briefly, what got you into... Uh, the Akashic Records, and and what it what does it mean? What is the Akashic Records to you? Well, the Akashic Records to me are a realm where all information is sort of kept like a library, like records of each individual's soul journey, um, each lifetime, each choice, each lesson. Um, each relationship, agreements, contracts, it's all sort of in your your record. And um, I learned about it from my very first experience with uh, a channeled, with a being that wanted to channel. So um, I think this was in early June of 2020. And I had been meditating a lot. I, I still... I'm a meditator, so I meditate quite a bit. But during the quarantine, I was meditating much more because I had more time. So um, during one of my meditations, I had this desire for some being to speak through me. And um, that one, I'm not super clear on who it was, but uh, so we'll we'll just call this a, a being. And so... <laughs> um, that is the being that asked me to learn about the Akashic Records. And I, at that point, didn't really know what the Akashic Records were. Um, but that later that night, I asked my partner, we were on a walk, and I was like, do you know anything about the Akashic Records? Like, what is that? And she's like, yes, you know, they've been coming up a lot for the last couple of months. So I, I bought a book and it's been on the nightstand for like two months. And we both have stacks of books on our, our nightstand. So I didn't know it was there. Anyway, I read that book and somehow it came easy to me somehow saying the, the prayer, the opening prayer and channeling the records just, just came easy to me. So that's how I, I started doing them. So when and again, this is um all via Zoom, Skype. Um, you can you can do these uh, internationally. So when someone's coming to you for a, an Akashic reading, then you're um no one's going under regression, even though you you have have done a, your own QHHT uh, re regression session. But uh, just as you're channeling, it's all very you know conscious channeling is what you do, right? Yes. So so this is a conscious um, conscious channeling, I guess, where you go into the the client's uh, Akashic records. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yes, we do a short meditation. I I do the opening prayer and I close my eyes and there's a sensation I experience when I know that the guides are ready to channel for them. And uh, they ask their first question and we just go from there. So yeah, everything is directly channeled and spoken to them. Okay then, so um, with the uh, Akashic Records, just because obviously it's, I, I, we're going to get it's all part of the channeling but obviously it's just I find it you know fascinating I'm sure other people will do as well that um, in those sessions uh, you I, I guess what's going to come through is what you need to hear 
right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, and, and you know what's interesting is that these are things that they already know inside themselves. Right. So it's, all, it's, it's always um, what I find really interesting is when they say, you know, I've never shared that with anybody. The, what, they, what they brought through is an internal narrative I have with myself. It's not something I've shared necessarily with anyone else. And so um, that is always gives me chills. Um, but yeah, it's usually just helping guide them back to their heart and back to things they already know. Um, it's just reassurance and validation usually, you know? Yeah. I find it very unique because you've got the, there's that clairsentient part of you as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which, um, I suppose you became more aware of, um, as you sort of, you know, got deeper into this work. Yeah. Yeah, that started coming through more in the energy work that I do in person. But yes, there is, uh, during the Akashic Records, um, I will oftentimes feel when they're discussing something, uh, when whatever's being channeled is being channeled, when I can oftentimes f actually feel uh, what the client experiences in life around that um question or around that guidance yeah so it's not the Arcturian council really that's coming through at this point it's their guides it's the clients um what it's it's whatever's for the clients it, 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 you know it's it's whatever who they're ever there uh whatever is best for them to come through is coming through and you're sort of like a, a kind of like translated gatekeeper in a sense yeah 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 it's really special and fun <laughs> yeah no no it's i i bet um i bet i bet there's stories where clients have come to see you and for the healing as well um you know for the acupuncture and the, and the reiki but i bet you've had client stories where they've come and you know they, they there is a transformational process over time that's that's taken place by having these sessions I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think I'm so. Sure there, you, you've I think spoke so. To people that have had that experience. Um, with you. Yeah. Well, what what I feel more and more these days, especially about the energy work, is that in in many ways my role is 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 an, as an activator, um, and that's my greatest um, joy. I guess is is activating something within them for for them to experience their own powers and be able to access and receive their own messages and their own and their guides and and their own um gifts and uh oftentimes on my table is the first time they will experience something like that you know first time they see a vision first time they hear something the first time they feel a sensation in their body and it it activates something and and they go on to on their own journey to experience and access more of that and so that's that's what i really want to bring to people is that um just bring their own gifts online you know so to speak finding your life's purpose in a sense but then again we're all living our life's purpose i mean it's a loaded thing that really is i guess you know we're all here doing what we're you know what uh what we're doing and uh you know just the journey sometimes is the life purpose isn't it in some respects so w with the uh akashic uh records then you can i guess you know um look at um uh, relationships um uh, ancestral um maybe wounding or connect you know connections or what you know maybe hopefully using the right words here but um we just mentioned there maybe connecting with the soul's purpose um because there is a power is what i'm trying to get to in exploring the akashic records for those who feel that that there's a, a pull for that there's a there's a power in, you know in that in connecting with that eternal timeline maybe past future and present if they're all one yeah yeah i mean i think the the biggest thing that the akashic records offer is um just the opportunity to feel at peace um, on your path and to know that there's nothing wrong 
and that where you are is where you are um, based on choices you've made <laughs> and um, and that those choices are part of your path. And um, there's possibility to heal along the way. But I, th- I think that the records oftentimes offer uh, comfort in knowing that you are supported and you are loved by others in another realm and another dimension, including your higher self, um, that are always watching you as like guardians. And so uh, that I love that that off that I love the comfort that the, that the yeah. records offer people. Well, I mean, they, they talk about even the records have been able to offer, you know, um, help with manifesting. Maybe you've mm-hmm. got some blockages from some other place that's you're playing out again right now because we all are in a sense, right? We never got it yeah. the first time, but you know, maybe this there's a chance, not a chance, every opportunity to do whatever you want is what's what's really pulling you. But yeah, you can use it for um, manifesting, and um, I believe as well that you gave a reading to. It could be non-human as well, so we just use pets, for example, right? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah that was um, he, that was my first reading was my cat, to your cat yeah. mm. <laughs> my cat. His name is Baby Cat. Yeah, uh, yeah. What did it say? Well, he's adopted. We got him from a shelter, so um, I wanted to find out why he was so afraid of certain noises from our upstairs neighbor. And it turns out that, bro, I take it or leave it. I don't know. This is just what came through. Um, that he was born under a warehouse, sort of like a very um, noisy, lots of machinery, sort of something going on up above him. So those sounds scared him, and they still, <laughs> they still did when he lived here, and we had an upstairs neighbor. Um, so he also said he didn't like his feet touched. That was something else that came through. (laughs) That is funny, but that is, but, um, I guess you can apply that then. And maybe there's some different behavior with, with, with the cat from just knowing those little things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) But it is, uh, bless. Um, right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've done a different interviews on on the 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 Akashic records, and you know, obviously, pet pet readings is what some people do as well. It's fascinating, um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of power. And again, you could do a whole show on the transformational stuff that can come from that. So, you, it, what was funny about it though is that you didn't know anything about it. You're being told about it in a sense, but I guess you know. Um, it's just you know you you become more learned with it, but uh, yeah, it's something that you offer, and I know there's power uh, stories of transformation um, from people that that are, that are using that as well. So that that's that's beautiful. So, but but everything everything leads to where you're going now. So so in as you said, the pandemic, um, June 2020, um, through meditation, you started connecting to spirit guides, but there was also uh, a, a sort of short period where there was sort of you know in, in the middle of the night sort of you know a, a voice that was or voices that were coming to you loving voices but it was almost like it was you know your your subconscious but but it was having a sort of dialogue in a sense yeah yeah um i woke up to voices that i thought were just my own my own mind not being able to shut off in the middle of the night. And that happened for about three or four nights in a row uh, until the the last night when I was like, I don't think this is me, actually. And so I started in my mind, I uh, started speaking back to it, and it. And then it started answering me. And so there was a little bit of a conversation occurring. And, um, you know, of course, I thought, is this real? What mm. is happening here? Right, <laughs> what is <right>. this? <laughs> yep. um, am I losing my mind? What's happening? Uh, but I had been prepared for it in many ways. And one of those ways was, I think, uh, two or three weeks prior, I had watched a lot of 
um, documentaries on channeling. Oh, sweet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah and uh, I, and prior to that, I had no interest in channeling myself, like none at all. And in fact, I, I actually was even scared of channeling a little bit. I'd only experienced it twice. Once my partner wanted to go see Lee Harris in person and I didn't even, when he went in to transition to channel, I closed my eyes because I was like, what's going to happen? Is he going to look scary? What's going to happen here? You know, so I closed my eyes and then um, opened them when he was started speaking. And then another time at Nashville Center for Alternative Therapy, we invited a channeler there to do um, a channeling for uh, our clientele or, or whatever, a workshop situation. Um, and, uh, again, I was scared as like, well, what's going to happen when he transitions, I'm going to leave. So I left the room and waited for him to start the actual channeling before I came in, because I was scared to watch something scary. I don't know. What, I don't know. So channeling was never anything I myself wanted to do. Had no, that was not on the radar at all. But, um, this, this sort of time period where I was all of a sudden interested in learning more about it. I was watching show after show after show for about three or four days. And then I think about two or three weeks later is when I'm pointing to my bedroom um, is when the voices started. And so in some ways it was like, I don't know. Was part, uh, was part of the fascination, do you think, because of like, you know, some of the information that was coming through, it was like, it, it it was so deep in some respects, but and it and it was you know it was ways to ways for growth, ways for you know ways to look at it differently. Where is this coming from? Is it their subconscious? Is it what they're saying? You know, I, I get it. Um, there's there's some amazing information that comes from that space. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> well. Yes, the information that comes from them and and the sense I got from them of just this loving presence uh, yes. is what um, I guess got me out of bed <laughs> to channel the first channeling. So they requested that I get up and, and do the first transmission. And I got up and I just went into the living room in the dark and pressed record on my iPhone voice memo. And did the first transmission. Which I think is on your YouTube channel, isn't it? Um, That one is not on the YouTube channel. It is still on the highlights of my Instagram. Right. We'll, yeah. Yeah. We'll put all those links below. Anything Written. we're talking about, we'll put in the show more just below as well. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess doing all the energy work, doing, you know, all the energy work that you've done in the in the, in the past, you know, Reiki, you know, uh, Akashic record, acupuncture, it's all energy. It, it led you up to this point. It must have done in a sense. And yeah. um, maybe having the clairsentient part there as well, you know, you'd open with doing so much work with people, you know, you, you were open and you just didn't know, you know, maybe you just were unaware of just how open you were. Um, and you do apply discernment there as well. Well, not discernment, well, yeah, discernment, I guess, is one of is a, an important part. You you do protect is what I'm trying to say. Sorry, but you do use forms of protection. Yes, yeah, all the time, and and that's you know um, absolutely. Before I call on the Arcturians, I do a meditation where I do a protection barrier. Um, I also uh, have. I grew up Catholic. Not that I am Catholic, but I have a very strong relationship with Jesus. And so for me, um, personally, I call on Jesus a lot <laughs> to, as a form of protection. And he's he also just feels like um, a partner to me. Um, so that's part of my protection as well. Uh, and, you know, just doing cleanses like baths and um taking care of myself the way I eat, taking care of my body, all of that is a form of protection. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. What would you say if I said, uh, what is channeling? What is channeling to you? Hmm. 
I knew you were going to ask that. I know. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm going to answer that. <laughs> um, I think channeling is actually something that all of us probably do to some extent. So, and it can show up in many different ways. Everything from having a brand new idea to um, being inspired to write or draw or paint or create anything. Um, and then in the ways of, of me, I, actually speaking a channeling um is just sort of this potential or an access point to connect with our higher self and our guides and I could sort of have this um open vessel or open capacity to sort of have a meeting in some sense and syncing up of um, communication, let's say, yes. with other beings and other realms and other dimensions. And that could be, you know, anything. It could be, like I said, a past loved one, an angel, your own higher self, you know, a pet, whatever. Um, yeah. And so... I don't know if that answers it. It but. does. It does. No, <laughs> it, it does. Thank you for that. Now, in this process, uh, and I think it's just worth mentioning this as well, you did have to take a break. You, you, th there was a, there was a point where you were doing lots of uh, readings for people, whether they mm -hmm. were, I, I think that was a mixture of local or not online. I, I, I'll let you answer that. But um, yes, you, and I think a lot of people go through this, what you went through, where there's a sort of anxiety mo, you know, process. and you felt you know am i in the way should i be part of the re you know and I, I how do i get myself out of the way? it was all you know am i am i serving am I, you know, that's, that's what was what i wanted to do was to really serve and everything anything i've done is is that really so just uh, tell us about that yeah i did take about a, a little over a year break from the records because um in the beginning it was really lovely and i did feel that the readings were very powerful and um i somehow was naturally able to feel like I was in the back seat and that I wasn't interfering with the reading. But over time, for some reason, I started getting more anxious about my, my own, um, I don't know what it was, just getting anxious about not being a pure channel, getting anxious about getting in the way of the reading somehow. Um, and I really had this strong desire to, to offer the purest of this service to people. And when I didn't, well, it wasn't that I ever actually didn't feel that in a reading. I think that every, every reading was quite, uh, lovely, but my anxiety is what was not lovely. My anxiety around in a, a session or around a reading or seeing an appointment made um, sort of got worse and worse. And so when that happened, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to take a break. I don't want to go into readings feeling anxious. Um, I don't think that's serving me or them. And so I'm just going to cut this off for now um, until it feels right to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that because I know. Uh, yeah. It happened. You know, it, it, you had to work on separate, well, not separating yourself, but just p maybe putting that like oh, the ego part maybe to one side of like you know, um, yeah. I guess maybe it's that a little bit as well. Um, and and you did, and you came back to doing this in the end, and it's something you've been, and it's something you are uh, obviously. Uh, be, doing and have been doing for a while right now and and uh i find it you know yeah. i find it fascinating about the arcturians i mean what why the arcturians do you think what are the arcturians <laughs> so many questions <laughs> what's going well, on the arcturians as far as i know um are an interdimensional uh collective they are beings interdimensional beings um that from what they've told me are uh are a <laughs> a collective of of beings that that are in a mission to help earth transition into this new earth and do it by 
um, sharing and guiding them in, in love, truth, and harmony. Um, they are all about as far as the information they've given to me are all about opening the heart space, opening the heart energy field, opening that to um, change and transform the planet in a way that is going to be really lovely, apparently, down the road. I don't know when, but, <laughs> but I mean, I think it's happening, but, you know. Uh, this this new earth that they speak of, I'm wondering, you know, when when will that be fully, uh, I guess, visible to us? I don't know. Well, I do, I do, and maybe maybe uh, when we're ready. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and there's no, it's it's not, you know, we can't rush into that that space where it's that there's less war and more peace. You know, we're we're all there's things that need to play out, and um, they they sure are playing out. And uh, yeah, I, maybe there's a bit of distortion in the idea of what New Earth really is, and we may we maybe get into right. that just in the, the the quick bit of channeling we're going to do as well. So um, when you do channeling, from what I've seen, is you're able to just pop in and pop out. I mean, you're there, you're here with me all the time. But what I'm saying is, uh, you're able to stop the the sort of conversation in flow, and then maybe come in and you know answer something and then just go back into the the stream basically of what what you were what you were channeling before so it's very much just like this conversation right now but is there any sort of process you do to take yourself into that connection it's very simple i i basically do like i like i mentioned earlier a, a sh very fast short brief meditation um i protect myself and then I just call on the Arcturians. I, I I literally just say, I call on the Ninth Dimension Arcturian Council. And, and then I feel that sensation of them um, kind of just kind of come into the, the body. Okay, well, then I will let you do a short meditation and we'll bring them in and have a, um, a conversation. You want me to yes. start? Okay, yes. my minute. Do you want me to just tell you when I'm ready? Tell me when you're ready. It's fine. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Well, my first question is, there's so many people that channel um, the Arcturians, more than I thought, actually, right? So, are they channeling the same energy, in a sense, that's coming through right now? Or an aspect of it, maybe? Yes, my dear. Yes, yes, yes. The Arcturians, there are, um, although we are a collective, let's say, and we have this, this sort of energy that is all one, we also have, uh, individual energies in which we are, um, given the uh the job so to speak of contacting or um uh uh giving uh telepathic communication to uh certain individuals on the earth plane now some of these individuals are arcturian themselves and some of them are simply humans who have agreed to be part of our mission, part of sharing information with those on the planet in order to move uh, this transformation forward with love, with heart opening, with um, the sense of unity with the uh, courage to create uh, the uh, new earth, as you spoke of earlier, 
And uh, this is, um, let's say, uh, very special and dear to us, this mission, this mission of um, having access to those volunteers and, and being guardians for them, so to speak, and, and being guides and offering them the um, intelligence, so to speak, the intel, let's say, of the mission and how to proceed with our messages and how to share our messages and how to share that with their community. And so there are many on the planet, as you say, who can channel the Arcturians, and they are all around the planet so that many different communities can be, um, uh, can be, uh, what is the word, uh, can be active activated, so to speak, by the frequency of the Arcturians. So you've, you're obviously from some, are you from, you're not in, you're not in a, in a shared reality then, you're sort of just on the fringe of what we would perceive as this dimension? Well, this is where things get a little difficult to explain because humans do not have the capacity to understand uh, uh, timelines that are parallel or that have uh, the, po the potential uh, to live in many different uh, uh, dimensions, as you said, many different realms. And so what we um it is not so much that we live in 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 in, in another uh, how do we say another realm but we are just layers upon layers upon layers of time and energy and so this um it is we are not separate from you so to speak we are not so separate as if we are in another um it's not linear in this way. Uh, as we said, it is layers upon layers upon layers. And, and what happens is when you access one of these layers, you see something new, something new is revealed to you. Yes, you may understand this if you consider um, uh, in your realm, those of you who can see ghosts, those of you who can see spirit, right? Those of you who can see through the dimension or this realm that is simply a layer within the dimension that you live in. And yet it is as if this sort of curtain gets pulled uh, to the side so that you can then see another this, this other layer that lives within the layer that you reside in. Um, so in many ways, um, this is how we... Um, operate, so to speak, in order to have access and communicate with Yvonne. And also, um, there is this ability that she does not recall quite yet, not yet, she does not recall that she travels to see us in the realm that we predominantly reside in and energetically live in. And um, Yvonne has, is, is, particularly advanced, so to speak, um, in that she here in the Arcturian uh, realm is uh, what we call a peacemaker. Her role here is quite um, um, important. She is a peacemaker here, and her name here is Onya, and she is uh, very... Um, uh what do we say she is very uh well known so to speak she is she is a loyal uh companion to many on the earth plane and she in this a life as Yvonne here now has volunteered to at this time be um a 
a a uh, speaker, so to speak, of the Arcturian lifestyle of unconditional love, compassion, um, uh, creation through open heart space. This is what Yvonne is here to share. And this, this is what is going to activate many others on the earth plane so that they themselves can open up to their heart space and create something new on the play on the earth plane so a new way of being on the earth plane there are so many of you who are now waking up and we love this we love this there is so much pleasure and joy in watching you evolve watching you um in many ways discover yourselves and so this discovery of yourselves is in large part to allow is in large part is allowing your heart to open free of fear and and free of any past stories or narratives that is holding you back or down now is the time to release these so that you can create something new and powerful on the earth plane and we know that this is possible because we know what is to come we are in many ways a part of your future so to speak and so we know that there is a beautiful transition and transformation occurring right now and that the energy is so um, expansive and that this energy um, it can be quite scary at times because it also involves a lot of destruction at the same time and we know that you know what we are speaking of because everyone around you is seeing things um sort of fall uh systems fall um egos egos a lot of ego deaths uh a lot of awakening within yourselves so that you can hold the capacity of a frequency of an earth that is so much more different than what you are now experiencing and this is on the horizon and and we are so pleased with the way things are going even though for humans it can be quite challenging and quite difficult to see that on the horizon there is something quite bright and beautiful coming coming very soon for you and all because you are doing the work, all because of you, each one of you is being so courageous in, um, in the discovery of yourselves and of taking steps forward into, um, this, this new way of being. Does this make sense to you? It does. Obviously, there's a lot of, you know, this is a difficult place to come to if incarnation is is what we do or how, however the consciousness is coming into this existence right and that's if it's been before which i do believe it has right and always will be um and i uh, as you probably said to uh, avon you know she's the brave one as part of your group to sort of you know be the part be the chain that's that's it in in this uh, reality yes yes there are many brave ones on the planet at this time. In fact, we would dare say each one of you is brave to come to a planet where um, what occurs for you is a complete uh, um, uh, separation, so to speak, from source. At least you don't recall it. There is a, um, what is the word, uh, amnesia so to speak, when you come here. And that is very frightening, we would think, um, to, to have this forgetfulness of your origins, of your, of your connection to source, of all that you are. 
So yes, it is very brave. Each one of you is so brave to come to the earth plane to rediscover yourselves and to connect again with source, to connect to your higher beings, to connect to your galactic families, and 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 to to go through the process of this um, chipping away of who you are not in order to discover this. This is a very brave process indeed. Yeah, I mean, so many people have, uh, you know, just maybe just a bit of concentration on the Ukraine, you know, and other conflicts, right? Because the Ukraine was is just the current conflict. I mean, there has been other conflicts, of course, right, where so many have lost their lives. And, you know, the, the, the pain of the families and, and everyone that has to live with that. Um, if it's not a if it's not a conflict in a war zone, it's a you know it, it, it's a it's a conflict you know w- w- between souls where they you know they're murdering each other or whatever it is or paining each other. Y- yes, you know f- from your perspective, it's you know you can see how from, like, as you would portray, you know it's it's beautiful, it's amazing, we're so happy. Yet being here, right, going and not remembering the connection of who you are for a lot of us, it's a very difficult. Um, situation but then i guess on the other side of that when we transition we see it from such a different perspective that actually all that i thought was true all the suffering it was just part of the game it it was there was no other way to evolve yet but to have the disconnection and to go through what we went is it with free choice yes maybe i should ask that always always so yes. any, anyone that's laid down their life for whatever conflict or whatever, you know, which we would term craziness, you know, there's a case in Wisconsin right now where a guy, you know, killed a number of people in a in a Christmas um, parade, and you know those families have forever got to live with that pain, and many others that go through the same thing. But at some level, we've we've agreed upon it before we've we've even incarnated do you think yes yes and and we we want to acknowledge the pain that this these types of um agreements cause for you and and for others we don't want to dismiss this we know how difficult and challenging this can be but yes there is free will and yes we cannot know the um, expansive um, uh, impact or implication, so to speak, that one um, event has, not just on the soul itself that agreed to uh, experience that, or, or the two souls or what have you, whoever agreed to experience this and the roles they played in this experience, they are uh, the impact of this experience is not for us to um, to uh, understand fully because it cannot be understood fully. There, there is a a, a ripple effect that impacts um, a, a whole timeline of experience uh and not just for the two that directly experienced it but even for yourself who sees something on tv you are now altered in some way in some way it has impacted you even though you were not directly in that experience you are changed and so by you being changed you now uh uh act or behave or do or create something that will then change another and then that goes and that goes and that goes and so this um this choice let's say is not made just for an individual level of of growth it's actually seen beyond the individual and seeing uh in so far out that we could not even tell you the impact it has. It's that big. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that, that that's uh, very difficult to get your head around. And, you know, the, the impact that you know, as you say, the spread of the impact and 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 the the changes it it makes. Um, and when you talk about, and we, because I talked about this, about this sort of this this idea of a new Earth. 
the idea of a global shift in a sense what would that even look like what, what would there be less of what would there be more of and 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 why do we need it because if the souls if we if we're choosing to come and have these experiences what why, why do we need a a, a a kumbaya kind of you know eternal existence down here um even though i guess it's a paradox because like in one sense you want it but in the other way you think just from a higher perspective is that really what everyone else wants or it's all wise yes well there will always be let's say a realm in which um in which you are able to come and learn uh as you do on earth school now that is not going to go away if you choose to come to a a a an existence like it, it is on earth at this time there will still be opportunity for that however we are transitioning into a layer let's say another layer that gets revealed and it may be within the same uh uh uh, uh how do we say um same field so to speak but there, we're, we're coming into a layer of where if you choose to uh, create a life where there is more compassion, there is more love for one another, there is more patience, there is more um, allowance for people to be themselves, where there is less uh, greed, there is less control, there is less um uh power uh hungry a power hunger let's say um that where everybody is taken care of because you care for one another that much that nobody should be left behind and so what we see occurring in this transition is a life where your healthcare system will be different your financial system will be different everyone will have housing and food nobody will be left behind everyone will be cared for this does not mean that you will not still have challenges this does not mean that you will not still have choice in the matter of who you be in the world or who you are or how you contribute but what we're seeing is that the majority of you will be living from a heart space where and a frequency let's say where anything that is lower than than the um the um the idea of we must care for one another we must love one another this is what is important now anything that lives beyond that frequency is not going to be supported it just won't be able to survive now again if that is the frequency you would like to live in there is going to be a place you can do that but it will not be in this um, new earth realm, so to speak. Um, this is going to be a place where uh, our unconditional support for one another is most important. It is what takes precedence um, that someone is cared for and has everything they need to create a life for themselves where they feel safe, where they feel fully self-expressed, where they can be creative, where they are fed and, and nourished. And um, not just physically, but mentally, spiritually, emotionally, where you are all connected to one another in a way that right now you don't quite understand you still find yourself separate from one another you still see someone in front of you and think that you are you are separate when you are truly connected you are connected in so many ways and and so what what, what we're seeing in this new earth is that this connection will now be 
felt, this connection will be understood, and that when you are hurting um, another, you are hurting yourself, or you are hurting the collective, or when you are um, uh, trying to keep someone else down, or you are in competition, or you in comparison of one another, this will not be uh, any longer. Uh, this will this will be a past way of of living and understanding one another. Um, again, we do we want to say again that if someone feels that they are uh, they cannot operate at the frequency of which this type of planet will operate well they will not be able to survive here in this planet on this on in this frequency that it just doesn't isn't a match it will not it will not be possible they will have to be somewhere else um, so what we're seeing is just an abundance of love and care for one another that is unlike anything you have experienced before. Did you have to go through the same sort of evolution as well? Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. How long did it take for your evolution of such a an experience mm -hmm. that you describe? Thousands, thousands of years, my dear one. Thousands of years. Yes, um, it is now, um, as we mentioned before, we are in a, a collective where uh, we, we have telepathic communication for one. So we are always uh, very informed, very well informed of the state of one another. If someone is feeling a bit off or um, disconnected, we do not allow that, so to speak. And we don't say that as a way of controlling one another. We say that as I care for you so much that this is just not going to be. Come here now. Let's heal this. Let's, let's, um, let's feel, uh, uh, what needs to be done in this moment to allow for yourself to feel uplifted, feel safe and cared for in this moment. There is just not, um, a uh, dismissal of this whereas on the planet now on the earth plane you can quite easily dismiss someone's emotions or feelings or even be quite impatient with them i don't have time for this i'm sorry you feel like that i gotta go this is something that humans still experience um there is not the 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 time to sit and stay and and sort of pause let's pause what's going on what happened there? How can I help you? How can I care for you? This is what your transition will be like. More pause, more compassion. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously, you're coming through at this time. And maybe you've come through many, many times before. But at this time, because um, I guess it's important, isn't it? I guess this time uh, for, for this change it is wanting to happen even though it may take lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes after a conversation like this you know uh, to even seem but when do you start you start with yourself don't you in a sense i mean yeah but you're reaching out to try to reach out to those who are ready to listen even though the numbers may be small it's it's so you so there's so much love for us in our progress that it, it's it, it, why wouldn't you reach out even if it's just a small number because that has a ripple effect as you mentioned yes exactly but let me tell you something dear one it there are more people than you realize that are ready for this there are more people um, internally experiencing a transformation that they don't know how to express or they are not ready to share because, well, you know, maybe people will make fun of them or they will not feel safe or they will not be believed or um, they will be shunned, what have you. Um, there are many, many, many more than you think are going through a great, great awakening and a grand transformation. And so yes. it's that ripple effect. I hate interrupting. It's that ripple effect. That's all I'm seeing right now. Sorry. Yes, exactly. Yes. So when each one of you has the courage and the bravery to share what you're going through, you open the space for someone else to share, to feel safe, to discover that they are not alone and that 
this transition can only happen when all of you um, um, are free to express yourselves. So what you are doing is very important. We want to acknowledge that. We want to acknowledge that the work you are doing is creating a great space for those, those people who may have fear around what is occurring for them. You are showing them that this is not crazy. This is quite normal and extraordinary, actually. And that this is what's going to cause a great, great shift on the planet. And so we want to acknowledge you, dear one, for the work that you are doing. Thank you very much. We are very grateful to you. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, sometimes it can be a, you know, a, a very difficult road because, you know, in an interview like this with a potentially a discarnate, discarnate entity that's been blocked off from so many people's um, uh, higher selves for so, for so many eons, and then we're having a conversation because this is the only way to bring through a message of, of change. That that's with, with free will, with love, with no conditions. You know, it's not like you you want to charge for a subscription for this unless the human side does. Right. What I'm saying is, it's got to this point to something like this, to look at things so differently. Yet for me, doing it, you have to understand that. Well. I guess there's that still that that part of me that that's like, I want to do you know, I want to do something that's going to help, and but but I never thought it would be this angle. Yes, yes. Well, you have followed your heart, and this is what we're asking others to do. You have followed the impulses. You have followed the curiosities. You have followed the messages that you have received, and you do it quite well, actually. You've always, um, what we see, uh, have followed your messages and been quite curious. And you are also very creative and you enjoy connection. You enjoy um, learning and you enjoy being with others in a, in a way that opens you up to uh, new perspectives and new ways of seeing things. And what you have done now is, is, is quite remarkable, quite remarkable. And, and, and it is not a coincidence, dear. You, you chose to do this. You planted this seed for yourself in this lifetime because you yourself are going to be quite, um, you, well, you're going to play quite a big role in the transformation of the planet. And so when you say, when's it going to happen? Well, you're doing it. You're doing it right now. You are part of the transformation. And so... Um, I, we know that it, it can feel quite um, uh, long, perhaps, like far away. But the truth is that each one of you uh, right now are doing it. You are um, creating the space for transformation. And just by being and following your heart. By being honest, by being curious, by being um, open to discovery, by seeing what unfolds, by following a simple impulse. This is what we ask all of you to do. Yes, yeah, well, it's a bit like the guest that's on here today. You know, she she was, had that curiosity about, you know, uh, and, and sort of bin dived. It was binged, binged sorry, um, channeling material. But that was really following an impulse. There was something... As you, the same sort of description you've said there, that, that she was, um, there's that knowing of the truth, isn't there? Like, oh my God, this, there's some truth, this, there's some, there's some eternal truth that I've felt before. That's, yeah, I, I get it, I get it. So, with the times that we're in right now, and um, you know, with with uh, nuclear um, uh, talk on the agenda, which uh, you know has has never been there before, and I I, I find it disgusting uh, the, 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 in some respects. And then if I take my human head off, um, th these are you know everything's playing a role here in a sense, you know, uh, on a very unconscious level uh, for people living in a heightened uh, state of anxiety right now. That er I guess th there are certain energies that have got to play themselves out on there there seems to be 
you know no matter how much we want you know yes it's all important about living in purpose and you know you know, change yourself you change the world but then there's another reality that's going on around you that you can't change but it does have a direct effect with what you're doing of course what i'm saying is it just looks like there's bigger things playing out that there's a path and there's a that there's um I'm not really putting this in very good words, but it just feels like, um, uh, what would you say to people then? Maybe I should say that I live in, in fear right now with, with what's going on in the world and the crumbling of the, of so many things. Yes. Yes. As we mentioned earlier, we want to acknowledge that the choices that souls have made to have a greater impact on the world are um, not to be dismissed. And we don't want to um, uh, uh, say that, um, that what they are experiencing is some beautiful, blissful experience. Um, we understand that it's painful. We understand that it's difficult um, and, and very very challenging to see your loved ones in pain or suffering. Um, many, especially having to see their children in some ways suffer. Um, and what we would like to say is that these are, um, well, very brave souls to, to agree to this type of experience in this lifetime because what they are doing is changing the world. And it may not feel like you are being changed or you are capable of changing to help them, doing any change to help them, but you are, dear one. And, and they are. They are changing the world with their experience. They are giving us the opportunity to um to to rise up in a way that we haven't done so for ourselves or for others before and there are changes occurring there is change happening and 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 as we mentioned before which we know you are familiar with that there is no creation without destruction this is simply how nature is they live hand in hand and so in order to create something new, the old must crumble or must be destroyed, or there must be some kind of unfortunate conflict um, in, 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 in ways of politics or government or this type of um, um, unfortunate uh, control systems that still um that still play out on this planet, yes. We've gone through this before. If you, if, if Atlantis is true, or if there's any any truth in that, there was this, you know, um, mecca in a sense uh, with heightened uh, technology that we we don't even have now in some respects. Uh, we we have gone through these phases before, um, but this is different. And so the main message here then is really about there's a deeper karmic reason why everything's happening, right? Because everyone's got their own journey that they're on, their own, their own agreements and, you know, and, and, and whatever it is they've come here to see through and mix that in with everyone else's life plans as well, right? Uh, it, it's very difficult to, yeah. We've got an awakening, uh, time of awakening because the time is, it, it is now, regardless how long this is going to take and, and, and the shifts on it. But really, it's about, and tell me if I'm wrong here uh, or, or correct me, please, but it's really about creating a reality for yourself where it's, you know, where um, you can have the reality you wish. So be careful of what you wish in a sense, right? But it's about, I guess it's about coming, coming, uh, I find these words difficult to say something, but it's, it's coming to realize how we're all one. What we do to another, we do to ourselves living in purpose not having to or, you know be of service to to live that way all the time but what i'm saying you know what coming from love with what you want to do as long as it's not hurting anyone else um of course it's of service and really really coming into our 
purpose, no matter what that is. But that comes from doing what you love to do anyway, or, or um, it's a it really is a rebalance. There's a lot. There's a lot of words that we truck around right now in this time that we live in right now and that we don't understand. And I'm trucking them around as yes. well. Yes, it's very simple. It is. Um, it. It is all within the heart. Your bodies are designed in a way to fulfill on the heart. And this is all that it is. This is for the human where all of your answers lie. And when you can freely experience yourself from the love of the heart, you will be able to experience a life that is full of um, possibility. And we know that that can sound um, very vague or um, perhaps even cliche. But the truth is, my dear ones, is that your heart, the honesty and the uniqueness of each one of your energies that is held in your heart space holds something that is of great potential. And, <clears throat> and your um, ability or your capacity to fulfill on that potential is, um, well, it hasn't been utilized, let's say. But you are coming closer and closer and closer to understanding the power that is within you and that is held in the heart space. This is the greatest and most powerful energetic field available to you, is the heart. And it is the greatest gift given to you. It is the greatest gift given to humans. And when they are able to contact this in a way that allows them to um, drop fear, allows them to drop uh, self-serve servants or self-serving uh, of self, let's say, um, you will begin to see incredible, incredible uh, creation, and incredible inventiveness, and incredible systems, and incredible um, uh, possibility simply become, become. It will be present to you. It will be evidenced to you right there in front of your eyes. Um, the heart space, my dear, can... Well, it has the power to change anything, anything. And you may have experienced this yourself, even in the tiniest of moments of um, perhaps a conversation with somebody where at first your heart was closed or at first perhaps you didn't want to share something vulnerable or perhaps you uh, feared that they would attack you if you if you were to come with them with an open heart, and then the moment you 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 allow the heart to open and you communicate with honesty, perhaps, and with vulnerability, and and with no um, armor, you see that this, that this arms another. They suddenly. Uh, well, some may feel suspicious at first, but many will suddenly feel like, oh, I, I can be myself. I can share myself honestly right now. Okay, let me try that. And suddenly what was possible um, before or what was not possible before is now created a great possibility. A great possibility of creating something new, of creating something of truth, of unity, of harmony, of peace, of oneness, of compassion, of love. 
because the heart is the most powerful space to operate from. It can change anything in a moment, in a heartbeat. It can change um, the possibility or or the uh, the uh, space for what's possible quite drastically and and quite quickly. So this is what um, we would like for all of you to practice so that you come into this new way of being on the planet and you begin to experience for yourself as you practice this more and more that it's not so scary to lead from the heart. It's actually quite divine. And oftentimes you feel more at peace when you can be honest and share yourself from the heart. Well, um, I just want to thank you very, very much for coming through. I just want to add this very, very quickly, and we'll end it here as well, that, you know, on top of all this, you know, there are... um, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of karma between past lives being worked out between individuals and groups uh, when we see what's going on right now with, you know, and what has been going on on planet Earth for so long. Um, So there's that to take in as well. I I just want to thank you uh, very much for that, um, for what you just concluded there as well and, and for everything you've said. So thank you. Thank you, dear one, for this opportunity to share our messages with you. And thank you for the work you're doing. Again, we want to acknowledge you. We are very grateful to you for sharing this work and for sharing uh, your knowledge and your wisdom and your heart. Thank you for doing this because you are making uh, a big difference in the world. And and we want to um, just say our thank yous to you. Thank you. We will speak again. Yes. Excellent, uh, Avon. So I just want to mention there as well, if people um, want to do, want to, uh, are interested in having a session with yourself, then you don't normally do the Arcturian challenges one to one. Everything else is one to one, but you do the Arcturian challenges where people can ask questions on a um, weekly YouTube broadcast, a live uh, broadcast that you do. And we'll put that in the description below. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Um, well, I I actually, well, they can submit questions if they'd like. Yeah, I, I kind of quit doing that for a while. But yeah, I they're always welcome. Anyone's welcome to contact me and ask a question. Okay. <laughs> if they want be careful because yeah. then yeah. <laughs> gonna, yeah you'll get a few people though i'm sure well i'm sure people will be very grateful of that but i'm just saying that that is it what day in the week is it that you normally do the live broadcast for the channeling well i don't do a live broadcast it's all recorded okay um, so people can ask send questions in for the pre-recorded version to yes. be answered. okay yeah yeah and and to contact and you us- yeah Oh, um, contact me through the Unravel Collective 1111 at gmail.com. That is one way. Or on my um, Instagram at the dot Unravel Collective. Excellent. Okay. Well, well, all these links and your website and everything we've talked about will be in the description below. Uh, you guys have got new projects uh, that you're working on as well. You've got a new center that you're, you know, in a couple of years that'll be up and running in New Mexico. I know you're laying the sort of, literally laying the foundations for everything right now. And I'm sure yeah. that there's, uh, uh, that that'll be a beautiful thing uh, to, to have that. Uh, we'll get you, we'll, we'll, we'll speak again, you know, um, I'm sure we will. Uh, that was powerful. And um, I really enjoyed that. And I just want to say, I just want to thank you very much for coming on and giving us an hour and a half, uh, maybe a bit more, uh, which was not planned for, right? But just thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. So happy. Mm-hmm.